He was an amateur champion up the division at 145. He he's doing the finish down the stretch. Hammer fist surrender. Out to Main Stone. Are you ready to meet the fighter who's been making waves in the UFC's bantamweight division? He's a true contender with a record of five consecutive victories and an undeniable skill set that has impressed fans and opponents alike. He's none other than Aljamain Sterling, a fighter who has faced both highs and lows in his almost seven-year career with the UFC. What makes Aljamain such a force to be reckoned with? Let's delve into his journey and discover how he has become a model for his division. From his hard-won victories to his controversial bouts, we'll explore the moments that have defined his career and made him one of the most exciting fighters to watch. Sterling. He grew up in Union, a small suburb in New York, surrounded by his large family. With 20 children in the family, 14 of whom live under one roof, Aljamain was constantly vying for attention from his parents and siblings. But he loved the joys of growing up in a big family. His first love was push-ups, but he eventually found his true passion in wrestling. He excelled on the wrestling team in high school and even made it to the state ranking thanks to his success on the mat. His early life experiences taught him the value of hard work and dedication, qualities that would serve him well in his future career as a professional fighter. He's got to sit backwards. He tapped! He tapped! That's oh. it! El Shemain USC career his journey in the MMA world began on April 22, 2011, at the tender age of 21. Sterling quickly made a name for himself, winning a couple of belts on the local circuit in New Jersey before signing with the UFC. In his UFC debut at UFC 170, Sterling faced off against Cody Gibson. It was a nail-biting match, with both men having their moments on the feet and on the ground trying to wall walk here good job by spins right on top of him almost took his back there however sterling's sheer tenacity and skill led him to take over the fight wow he's big opening shots up. by sterling and win by a unanimous decision after three rounds five months later aljo faced off against hugo viana and out wrestled him for most of the match hugo had to defend against several submission attempts single leg and he does very nice like a third leg to post up and get back to your feet on it and then pass but all joe kept coming back with ground and pound leading the referee to step in hammer three keep the judges out of it oh Jermaine, punk master next up was his fight against mizugaki this time all joe dominated the action in the clinch and on the ground taking Mizugaki down and raining down punches from above. Mizugaki did well in defending against submission attempts, but Aljo was too much to handle. He's gonna have to explode on something. I mean, Sterling. In round three, Aljo locked up an arm triangle choke while off his back, forcing the tap. To the side, got sideways on him, applied the pressure. Johnny Eduardo was Aljo's next opponent and Aljo didn't disappoint. He bought the fight down multiple times and did some damage on the feet. In the second round, he secured a takedown and threw punches from above before locking up a guillotine choke that forced the tap. Although there was a rising prospect in the UFC, Aljo lost his next two fights against Brian Caraway and Rafaela Sansa by split decision. These losses had him questioning whether he should continue his MMA career. Luckily, he decided to come back stronger than ever. In April 2017, Aljo faced off against Augusto Mendes in an intense matchup. While Mendes had some shining moments, both on the feet and on the ground, Aljo ultimately emerged victorious, thanks to his powerful takedowns and damaging strikes. Yeah. On his takedown attempts tonight, Boy, because of that length, it's very difficult. It was a unanimous decision win for the rising star. <laughs> Aljo's next opponent was none other than former UFC bantamweight champion, Bara, at UFC 214. The two traded blows on their feet, but Aljo fell to his back after throwing a kick. Despite this setback, Aljo managed to stay active by attempting submissions from his back and avoiding most of Barra's shots from above. 
still closes his guard here. Burrell, the mission attempts not taking damage. This is the type of fight Burrell wants. In the second round, Aljo became more aggressive, throwing kicks and attempting takedowns. He secured Burrow's back and continued to throw shots from above. Sterling. By the end of the third round, Aljo had secured yet another unanimous decision win. However, in his next fight against Marlon Morris, Aljo suffered a brutal knockout. After getting dropped early on in the fight, it was a devastating loss, but Aljo refused to give up. In his next matchup, Aljo faced off against Brett Johns, a former Cage Warriors bantamweight champion. Despite Johns pressing forward for most of the fight, Aljo managed to secure takedowns and threw ground and pound strikes. As he Sterling, a full 15 minutes of it was another unanimous decision win for the determined fighter. In 2019, Aljo fought Cody Stamen at UFC 228. Although both fighters secured takedowns, it was Aljo who stayed busy with ground and pound and submission attempts. But it all depends on how tight his squeeze it's is. Tight. It's in the second round, Aljo locked in a Sulaz stretch that forced Cody to tap. He's gonna get a sit leg back up. Jeff, he's got to sit him backwards. Oh. Wow. But Al Jermaine Sterling, the funk master at his best tonight. Aljo's next opponent was Jimmy Rivera. Both men tried to bring each other down, but no significant damage was done. Aljo, however, looked good as he pressed forward and connected with some solid punches and kicks. Being rendered defensive here. It's a body strike from Sterling. It was another unanimous decision win for the fighter. Man. Advantage Sterling, the grudge match goes tough, tough opponent. I knew his takedown defense was going to be a point. In his most recent fight at UFC 238, Aljo faced Pedro Munoz. Although Munoz pressed forward, he ate many shots in the process, as Aljo picked him apart with his striking skills. Oh, he stunned him. He hurt him. He hurt his feet. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, Sterling. It was another unanimous decision win for the fighter. After his impressive performance against Corey Sandigan at UFC 250, Aljo earned a shot at the title. He was aggressive from the start, attempting a takedown and eventually securing Sandigan's back to force a rear naked choke and a tap out in just 88 seconds. He went out. Look at that. Aljamain Sterling made history at UFC 259 with a win that stirred up quite a bit of controversy. Sterling faced the reigning champion Peter Yan in a nail-biting match that had fans on the edge of their seats. Sterling started strong, landing some solid shots and securing a takedown. Oh, oh, yes. oh, first attempt at a takedown, he's got him. But Yan proved to be a tough opponent, connecting with punches and kicks and bringing the fight down multiple times. Oh, 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 look how patient Yan is. Doesn't rush in. Oh, oh, oh. As the rounds progressed, Sterling began to tire and Yan seemed to be gaining control. Then came the moment that changed everything. Sterling attempted a takedown but was denied, leaving him a grounded opponent with one knee on the mat. Yan, in a move that would ultimately cost him the fight, threw a knee to Sterling's head. That's illegal. Torn. His knee was down. His knee was all the way down. Illegal knee. He told Causing him to fall back and prompting the referee to pause the action. Sterling was given five minutes to recover, but was unable to continue resulting in Yan's disqualification. And Sterling's ascent to the top of the bantamweight division. The world, Aljamain, Sterling. In his rematch against Petter Yan at UFC 273, Aljamain put up a great fight. It was a close call, and he won via split decision. Some argue that Peter Yan should have been awarded the decision that night. But that's not all. Aljamain's fight against TJ Dillashaw at UFC 280 was a true test of his skills. In the first minute of the fight, Aljamain's opponent, TJ Dillashaw, had his shoulder pop out after a takedown from Aljamain. Champion. Looks big in there right now, man. Oh, 
Despite the injury, TJ bravely continued the fight, but Aljamain was just too good. He employed his classic backpack tactic, bringing the fight down to the ground, and delivered a ground-and-pound finish in the second round. However, controversy arose after the fight, as TJ claimed that he had been dealing with shoulder problems going into the fight, which downplayed Aljamain's win. Aljamain Sterling is not only an incredible fighter but also an inspiration to many. He has come a long way from his difficult upbringing in Union City and his passion for combat sports. Aljamain Sterling on his takedown attempts to has helped him overcome all obstacles to become a top-ranked bantamweight contender. Sterling's unwavering determination and hard work have paid off, and he has earned a place in the history books of the UFC. As Sterling continues to pursue his goals of building a sports legacy and supporting his family's careers, there is no doubt that he will continue to inspire others with his story of perseverance and success. If you liked the video, leave a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more MMA content. He's on there! He's on there! Joe, it's over. He's going to sleep. He's going to go. He went out! Look at that! Joe!